What's up, everyone? Welcome to the January 5th edition of DraftKings Tournament Plays presented by Jock Market. I'm your host, Adam Scherer. You can follow me on Twitter at ShipMyMoneyDFS. And as a reminder, use the code AWESOMO and Jock Market will match 100% of your first deposit up to $50. Today, we're going to take a look at five of the top tournament options on DraftKings. As a reminder, there is a ton of news in the NBA. We have 11 games tonight, so there's going to be no shortage. And ownership projections and player projections are going to change throughout the day. Be sure to tune in to the Live Before Lock and Deeper Dive shows on the YouTube channel from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. to get more up-to-date information. But for now, we're going to take a look at five of the top tournament options early on in the day on DraftKings. Coming in at number five, Shea Gilgis-Alexander is expected to return for the Oklahoma City Thunder tonight. The team as a whole is getting back to full strength, which makes them much less appealing than they have been in in recent weeks but Gildas Alexander is still someone that's likely to play 35 to 36 minutes he's well over a fantasy point per minute guy and he has a usage rate around 30 percent this season he's difficult to get to at $8,800 but there's actually not that many good guard options in his price range so he actually does make some sense as someone you could get to to be contrarian. He's currently projected for 4% ownership with an 8% chance of being in the optimal lineup at $8,800. Number four, Maxi Kleba is projected for 10% ownership, 15% chance of being in the optimal lineup. He's a $3,800 power forward option on DraftKings. Kristaps Porzingis is out once again for the Mavericks. Kleba is making his third, or is, is playing in his third game rather, since returning from a relatively long absence. He played about 24 minutes in the first game back. They had said before the game that he was going to be limited. He played 30 minutes in his second game. It's likely that you see 30 to 32 minutes from Kleba tonight. He's not the best per minute fantasy producer, but at $3,800, he still projects as a strong point per dollar value that will allow you to get higher upside elsewhere in your lineups. Number three, sticking with the Mavs, Luka Doncic projected for 10% ownership with a 16% chance of being in the optimal lineup tonight. He's only $10,600. He's also only point guard eligible, which makes it a little bit more difficult to get him into your lineups. But like Kleba, we saw his playing time increase by a few minutes last game. There's no real reason to think he's going to be limited tonight and won't give you 36 minutes or so. Porzingis is still out. We know that doesn't really lead to increased productivity for Doncic. His average per minute production actually is lower in games without Porzingis over the last couple of years than it is in the games that Porzingis has played. But the usage rate does increase. It's just mostly a matter of efficiency and a slight drop in assist percentage. The increase in usage rate means that Doncic still has a massive ceiling here. And at $10,600 and relatively low ownership, he makes a lot of sense in tournaments. Number two, Yusuf Nurkic projected for 18% ownership with a 26% chance of being in the optimal lineup. He is $6,800 on DraftKings, center only. He returned from the COVID list last game, started, played about 26 minutes. That is a really good sign for tonight's game. Uh, there was a chance he was going to be limited after not playing for an entire two weeks, but he came back, played a reasonable 26 minutes, and the Blazers are once again without C.J. McCollum. They're without Damian Lillard. So there's plenty of usage available for Nurkic, but also they're without Cody Zeller and Larry Nance is doubtful. So prior to going on the COVID list, we'd actually seen Nurkic's playing time uh, ramp up significantly where he was typically getting you 32, 34 minutes in competitive games. I would expect that he gets back to those numbers sooner rather than later with Zeller and most likely Nance sidelined. There's not really center options behind them. And you also uh, guys like Robert Covington that are likely to be the backup center uh, also need to fill in for, for Nance. So uh, Nurkic should play a lot of minutes here. He's projected for 18% ownership, which is relatively high, but this is a loaded center position in the mid range. You have Christian Wood, for example, getting even more ownership than Nurkic. Uh, Daniel Gafford is a very strong play here. Jakob Pertl is a reasonable option. So Nurkic's ownership probably can't get too high given all of the alternatives. And it, and it's likely that he comes in a little bit under owned relative to his chances of success. Coming in at number one, Tyler Hero, $6,900 with point guard, shooting guard eligibility. Projected for a healthy 27% ownership on DraftKings, but he has a 34% chance of being in the optimal lineup. The Miami Heat are still extremely shorthanded. No Jimmy Butler, no Bam Adebayo, no Duncan Robinson, no host of other characters. But um, Adebayo and, and Butler are the two big ones here. Without them on the floor this season, Hero has played over 400 minutes. He has a 31% usage rate. He's averaged 1.08 DraftKings points per minute. He should start and play a ton of minutes here at a very affordable $6,900 price tag. So to recap, the top five tournament options on DraftKings, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, number five, Maxi Kleba, number four, Luka Doncic, number three, Yusuf Nurkic, number two, and Tyler Hero, number one.